Would you believe me if I told you that you could increase your physical strength using nothing other than your own mind. Well, that was, a res that was the, the outcome of some research at the University of Texas at San Antonio, where researchers there got volunteers to imagine doing bicep curls. And amazingly, they literally got physically stronger. But what was specifically unique about this study was the ages of the people. Now, normally, these sorts of research studies uh, recruit younger people who tend to be fairly physically active. But in this study, the youngest person was 68 years old. The oldest was 87. And incredibly, they all got physically stronger. So in other words, they, they basically did th uh, three sets of 10 imaginary reps five days a week for eight weeks, and they improved their strength by 22%. Now that's not a small number, and no one lifted any weights. Literally imagining doing these bicep exercises had increased their strength by 22%. Isn't that incredible? Now, before I explain how it works, let me share another one of my favorites. Similar to this was done at the Lerner Research Institute in Cleveland in the US, uh, where they got no weightlifting, literally just got volunteers to physically extend and contract a little finger for a quarter of an hour a day, five days a week for three months, while another group just imagined that, so this wasn't lifting weights, this was just about physically moving. They just imagined that they were extending and contracting a little finger. Now, those who physically did it, at the start and the end, they lifted a wee set of weights to see how strong they were, not surprising, had gained strength, and it was about 53%. But those who did it in their mind had gained 35% in strength and hadn't even lifted a finger, so to speak. But isn't that, isn't that remarkable, though? Here we're talking about a physical change in the strength of a muscle that you haven't actually exercised. Now, here's how it works. In many ways... It, your brain doesn't distinguish between real and imaginary. So when you're imagining doing something, you activate many of the same brain circuits as if you actually were doing the thing. One of, one of my favourite studies, I've talked about this in other videos, is when researchers at Harvard got volunteers to play a sequence of piano notes on their fingers Monday to Friday, so five consecutive days, uh, while having their brain scanned each day. And a separate group of volunteers did it in their mind. Again, no physical movement, just purely imagining what that would be like to play the notes the same duration of time on the, mo on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these five consecutive days. And incredibly, the same reg region of their brain had changed to the same extent. And if you look at the brain scans, you can't tell the difference really between those who played the notes with the fingers versus those who played the notes in their mind. Isn't that absolutely incredible? Now, let me restate this. There's no, coming back to the, 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 the strength exercise, no one lifted any weights. But here was, in people, the youngest being 68 years old, the oldest 87, a 22% increase in their muscle strength doing nothing but imagining it. So you can use this in your life in lots of ways. You can actually use it, as research studies have shown, uh, to get better at a skill, you know, to learn something faster, even to improve at a sport or something. You can use it to improve your strength, even if you're not able to do strength work, let, let's say, because you've been injured for a while, you can actually offset any loss of strength. Some research has, has actually has actually shown that. You can even, if you're undergoing rehabilitation, you can speed up rehabilitation. In fact, even people who had a stroke, uh, who did visualisation, recovered more and faster than people who just did physiotherapy alone. So combining physiotherapy with visualisation, people have used these techniques to, to become faster at something, even to become better dancers. You know, so you can apply it in a, a multitude of different ways. You can even use it to increase your uh, flexibility and range. And, and let me share a personal example to illustrate this. This is something that I, I did myself. So I was doing some training uh, and you know, I used to do amateur athletics competitively in my 20s. So I always, I had this habit of always noting down my training times. And it's a habit that, that always sticks even to today when I'm doing 
a, a particular exercise consistently. I, I keep a note of, of my time. It's just my thing, you know. Uh, but anyway, I, I was doing five one kilometer run. So I was doing 5K, but I kind of, you know, what, what do you call it? Interval training. So I was doing like 1K runs with a three minute recovery in between each. And I, I reasoned that if I could improve my muscle elasticity and, and therefore my stride length, then it would be easier to cover the ground and I, my stride length would actually increase. If my muscles were more elastic and had a, a better range, then my stride length would be longer. So for the same amount of effort, I could cover the ground, cover more ground and therefore run things faster. So, so for a week leading up to the next time I was doing the, this, this training run, I visualised my, I visualised my muscles feeling more elastic. I visualised the what what it would feel like to run when my muscles, instead of feeling quite tight or or the range only so far, I imagined them literally like supple elastic stretching further. So that as I strided, I imagined my stride length lengthening further uh, and further. And then when I did, when I actually did the training run, amazingly. All five of my 1Ks, I ran between 10 and 20 seconds faster than I'd ever run before. Isn't that absolutely incredible? Even while I was running, it was so ingrained in me, the visualisation, that even as I was running, I had this imagined sense of my muscles feeling elastic and my range being further. And that's exactly what it felt like when I was running. Even when I was running these faster times, it didn't even seem as difficult as when I was running before. And maybe that's because when your muscles are tight, it actually expends more energy and it's more tiring. But when your muscles are looser and supple, you can actually, it does actually feel easier uh, to run. I used to do some athletics coaching in my 20s as well. But isn't that absolutely incredible? So here's a, here's a couple of exercises you can try for yourself just to show yourself that this works and, and get something out of it. So maybe th there's a skill that you're trying to learn, you know, maybe it's a sport, maybe it's a tennis shot or a golf swing, or maybe you, you want to learn to dance better. So pick a particular movement and spend a couple of weeks, maybe two or three times a week, just imagining yourself doing that movement, whether it's a shot you play or a particular movement or a dance or as I say, whatever it is, even playing a musical instrument. And just imagine the sensations from a first person perspective as if what it's like to be physically doing that, but better than you ever have before. And just do it repetitively, spend like say five or 10 minutes each time you, you do it. So if you do it like three times a week, then spend five or 10 minutes, three times a week, just imagining yourself, let's say suppose it was a golf swing, imagining playing that shot when it feels amazing. Imagine exactly where the ball needs to be to strike it. What type of, you know, how your muscles would be moving if you're striking it, if you're striking it absolutely perfectly, or if it's a dance move, what that would feel like as you've got the balance and the movement and the suppleness exactly right and just repetitively do it over and over and over again. And what you're doing is you're training your brain networks because the brain isn't distinguishing wheel from imaginary. So the brain is learning how to do this technically when you're not when you're not doing it. And what it does it speeds up the learning because your muscles are learning to do the very thing. Let's suppose uh, here's an little, little test you can do even yourself. Let's suppose let's have a go at doing a stretch. Maybe if you do yoga, just notice how far you're able to do a particular stretch and then come out of it and then visualise yourself again from a first person's perspective. Imagine what it's like to literally be doing that stretch, but now imagine your muscles feeling more elastic and literally extending your range of motion and imagine fully stretching into that particular stretch or, or yoga pose, if it's a yoga thing that you're doing, and then move back into the stretch or the pose. And notice if you're able to stretch further or move further than you were, than you did uh, prior to doing the visualisation. Another way you can try it, let's suppose you want to physically increase in strength. Let's suppose uh, you want to imagine doing bench press or, or maybe curls or, or something else. Let's suppose that you go to the gym or squats or something, whatever. Pick an exercise and then do, let's say, three sets of 10 reps in your mind, right? 
say three times a week for a couple of weeks. Now, if you can imagine lifting a weight that you know that you usually train with, but now imagine it's easier. So let's suppose it's bench pressure doing just randomly. Uh, and just imagine now that you're using the same weight, but you're pushing it easier and you're, you're actually feeling, your muscles are feeling really good as you're, you're doing that. Or even imagine putting an extra little bit of weight on the bar and imagine also you're able to do that. And again, repetitively, see, again, say three sets of 10, two or three times a week for a couple of weeks. And then test your strength before and at the end of the time and notice if you've got any stronger, whether it's in lifting a heavier weight or if it's just become easier to do the, the to lift the weights you were lifting already. So, so get, have a go at one, one or more of these exercises to demonstrate it for yourself and, and see how you go on. Thank you.